Hey, how's it going everyone? Mick from All About Tech. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to talk about the new Starlink internet broadband service that SpaceX and Elon Musk are developing. Um, and I want to talk about if this is going to be an, a massive game changer for the traditional ISPs and how they're currently conducting business. At the moment, if you don't have fiber, uh, a fiber connection to your house, if you only have the, the the really old copper line connections say you live in a rural area say you live in the countryside and you don't have those that faster infrastructure in place to get faster internet you only have one option and that one option is for those is for those older just copper line connections a lot of the time you you won't exceed 10 10 megabit it really is bad the isps know that it's the only option for you and therefore they will charge them the same price as say what I can get with my fiber connection. I have 350 megabit with Virgin. I've got BT available to me. I've got Sky Fiber. I mean, they call it fiber, but it's only fiber up to a certain extent and then copper to the house. I still get 350 meg down and around 35 meg up, which isn't too bad. The upload is, is always affected. Um, it's only companies like Hyperoptic that can do gigabit down, gigabit up, and and really they're only available in major cities. They've uh, they've launched in Southampton, my local city. They they don't go outside of that. I'm not in the city of Southampton. I'm I'm a bit outside that. In comes Starlink. In in, in terms of 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 myself, it may not be the best fit for me because, like I say, I get I can get up to 500 meg down. I have the 350 meg down because it's it's more than enough for me. But Starlink, they're creating their uh, their 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 satellite-based internet service. Satellite-based internet services aren't new. The way that the, the biggest issue with them has been input delay, and the reason why is because of how far away those those satellites are. Starlink have developed a a um, a satellite that will sit in low uh, low orbit just outside the uh, just above the lower atmosphere at around 500 kilometers i think and due to it being much much lower they can get a much lower latency um they're aiming for around 30 milliseconds of delay of uh, of delay which is in the region of fiber or at least comparable to fiber and remember this entire infrastructure is wireless um so it is incredibly impressive in terms of speeds they're expecting um, around 100 meg down, 40 meg up, uh, which already the upload speed is faster than what I get now. If you have the uh, the fiber connections available to you, this isn't going to be for you. But there are so many people out in rural areas that don't have the uh, the the areas just don't have the infrastructure in place. Having having this available to them is really going to make well, it's 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 going to be this is going to be the option to go for because they're not going to just continue to have really slow internet at a really high price. Even if they lowered the price um, at that point, customers will know at that point that they've just been taking them for a ride this whole time and really taking advantage of customers. But yeah, the way that they uh, that they do this is Starlink have um, basically. A load of satellites up in orbit as you can see the starlink ones are ab at about 550 kilometers other satellites are a thousand kilometers upwards um that's how they get the latency lower which obviously if you're like online gaming and stuff that's input delay is is an absolutely massive massive factor it is a really important factor the uh, the antennas themselves are phased array antennas so you've got four powerful phased array antennas um, what that means is that they're they're able to have multiple antennas on a satellite and then they can do beam forming and, and other things. Basically, they can, instead of physically rotating the antenna to send out an RF signal, they can electronically steer a uh, RF signal because all of the antennas are, uh, are producing that RF signal and they can electronically form... Um, the, the the beam that they want to go out 100 meg down 40 meg up i've i've actually i've signed up for the uh, for the beta which they're uh, which they're going to be uh, rolling out really soon there's like a 99.999% chance that my area is not going to 
be a fit for their beta or a fit for their service, really. I think uh, there was a video where it was explained that they'd need around 40-odd thousand satellites to get complete global coverage. And at the moment, they're doing a launch like every two weeks with like 60 antennas. They've got like over 500 operational now, um, and they just keep pumping out more and more and more, which is really cool. And because they're in low orbit and, they, and because they've got uh, other features as well, they don't interfere with like um, stars and stuff. So astronomers can still look up at space and not, not be able to tell that they're there. You will be able to tell that they're there at first because they're all really... When, when you first launch those satellites, they're all going to be really close together. But then as time goes on... Um, the satellites will move into position where they're supposed to be. I, 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 I'm just, I'm really excited to see what, what this brings in terms of, because core infrastructure for communications is incredibly expensive. That is one of the main re, and and it's it's very much time consuming as well. Being able to get infrastructure into all these rural places like the reason why they go for highly dense populations is because there's a more amount of people that can buy the service that's why unfortunately people in rural areas kind of get left behind in terms of communications uh, core infrastructure this is an absolutely massive thing um not just for those that are in rural areas and in in say in in the western world but this can give global coverage this can give access to internet services to places that you couldn't get internet before um and all you need is if you have the service all you need is the satellite and a router connecting to the satellite technically you could buy a caravan well you could buy if if if, if you get chosen for the beta or whatever get the satellite sent to your house have it up there for a little bit if you go if you go on like a caravan holiday or something uh, or an rv uh, as they do in the states just take your satellite down, stick it on top of the caravan, stick your router, just drill a hole through the top of your caravan or whatever, feed the uh, the wire to the router, and then you've got you've got 100 meg download speeds on the go wherever you are. As long as long as that satellite is in line of sight to the sky, where it can where it can um, send and transmit and receive those RF signals to those satellites, then, no pun intended, the sky's the limit. <laughs> uh, which in this case it's not. If I get selected for, for beta, I'll let you guys know. I've, I highly doubt that's going to happen. Um, the beta is going to start in the US and maybe Canada, and then um, by 2021 they want global coverage, which is really exciting. Um, this is going to help thousands and thousands and thousands of people that are currently getting ripped off um, on their broadband for not having fiber optic uh, core infrastructure in place. And that's nothing to do with them. They could have um, their own line put in, but it's it, it's incredibly expensive if the, if the infrastructure is not already there. You have to get the infrastructure in place, which costs thousands. And, and then obviously pay for the service on top of that as well. Um, so that's what I wanted to talk about today, guys. I think this is potentially a massive game changer. Not in highly dense populated areas. This isn't what this is for. Um, and in terms of the amount of satellites as well, satellites can only handle a certain amount of throughput as well. So in highly dense populated areas, if everybody is using Starlink, then that satellite just isn't going to function properly. Um, so it is going to be for those rural areas. It provides global coverage to the entire world. I think I I'm more excited about this than I am 5G. 5G it it, it it's it's, just, it's not all that. Um, 5G is just the next step to, uh, to to a first world problem really. 4G speeds are are absolutely fine at the moment. In 10 years time, 5G will will show its uses because there's going to be so many people using it i'm i'm heavily excited for this for this starlink service um i think it it's potentially an absolute game changer as long as they can get over the input delay because of how long it takes for an rs signal to get there and back um that that's going to be that's going to be the the biggest hurdle for them to to overcome i think but 
let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you're from the States, if you're in a rural area, let me know in the comments if you've uh, signed up for the beta for this. I, I think you, I really think you should. If you don't have good internet availability where you are, sign up to this beta. I'll leave a link in the description so you can go sign up. Um, and then if you do, let me know how it, how it goes. But uh, I've been Mick from All About Tech. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so you don't miss any future videos. And I'll catch you guys out in the next one. Peace.